Okay, in this next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use some functions. Functions are not necessary. You could write without functions, but they'll make your code a lot more readable. And they aid in this thing called abstraction, which basically allows you to call a function and not really remember how it works or care how it works, but it'll, it'll just work. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to look back at what we wrote last time, okay? And we have this program from last time. Notice it's pretty repetitive, this code. Kind of repetitive. What we're going to do is we're going to change this up by writing, we're going to go all the way to the bottom here. Not all the way to the bottom, we're going to go kind of here. And we're going to write our first function. We're going to put void, and we're going to call it, void means it won't return anything. And we're going to call it um, zero state. Okay. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take this code up here, and we're going to cut it. And we're going to put it in here. Okay. Now you might say, well, what the heck does that do? Well, what we do is the following. Hold on, bud. Hold on. Okay, so what we do is the following. We, we go ahead and we call the function. So what did I call this function? I called it zero state. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to put zero state. So that will call that function. So it'll actually execute this code. And then instead of doing this and going here, it'll actually jump down here, do all this stuff. And when it gets to this bracket, it'll come back up here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all this out. I'm going to call this one state. Okay. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put void one state. Okay. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put void to state. Okay, so let's go to our to state here. I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to put to state. So I'm going to call the function. So I'm going to go down to to state and I'm going to put it in. Okay, so far so good, it's pretty easy. It's not making a huge difference in the code, except it's making it a lot more readable. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this out, and I'm gonna call this three state. So let's go ahead and make our three state. So that's our three state. And the last thing we're going to do is let's do our off state. So we're going to call this off state. So let's cut this out and we're going to call this off state. Okay. So here's the last one. And we call this state um, turn off state. I think that's what I said. <clears throat> All right. All right. So that's pretty good. So then I might say, well, what does that do? What do I, what do I care about that? What we could do is this. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. So this right here, we'll go ahead and close that. And okay, so basically when we look at it, we don't really have to look at this stuff. Right? We don't have to look at any of this. We could take all this and forget about it. And we could just look at the code up here now. We don't have to worry about any of the other stuff. The only thing I want to see is where does this one end? So let's figure out where's if you go to here, this guy's partner is, you know, there. Where's this guy's partner? Let's find it. Okay, it's right there. Good. Okay, you could actually do one more thing. We could take this stuff, just take it all here. We're going to cut it, and we're going to actually put it outside here. So we have a bunch of different functions. Now, let me explain. So if we look at our, 
me get rid of these. I don't really need them <clears throat> for this demonstration. Um, so we have void loop. This is you know my loop function. This is my setup function. All right, I like to do this. Huh. So we go ahead and do you know this is all your if state dot equals zero zero state if state that equals one one state else if state that equals two two state if state that equals three three state if counter equals nine turn off state this is good and what we do here is state one you know if it's zero state like that you know like that so it's, it just makes it easy it makes it really easy to sort of you know one state we don't have to remember what we did here we just could say hey you know what I have this thing called one state it's after our uh, this is this is a crappy ID but it this is the end of our void function so we have void zero state now if you want to make it look a little nicer you could do this all right so here are all our different functions right let's just make our code look better and that will just organize your code a little bit better all right this just makes your code look look a lot nicer. So this part you don't have to do. I'm just kind of going through it. So this just lines everything up, makes it look nice. So when you, it's more readable. Because readability is, is a very important part of coding. So anyway, that's how you use functions. We made the function down here. And we called it. Let's just go ahead and upload it. Make sure this thing still works. And it's going to be pretty quick as it changes. And of course, it still works exactly the same. It does nothing different. The only thing different it does is it goes zero state. And then it jumps down to zero state down here. It goes ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. And then it goes back up here. And it, well, up jumps out of the if statement because we already did one. You know, does that if the count is equal to nine. So it just makes our code a lot more readable. We don't have to worry about all the other stuff. We just look at it and like, oh, wow, this is so much more readable. So whenever you're getting a lot of repeating code or you want to make your code more readable, just go ahead and make a function, okay? So hopefully you understand how to make a function. It's fairly straightforward. You're going to get a bunch of examples on, on how to do functions. We could, we could do functions. There's other ways to do it too. Uh, let's see. There's actually some time in this video, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's do a function where... Just um, let's just do a new a new file real quick, and we're going to define two variables. Just int sum. Let's just do that, okay? Void setup. We're going to say serial dot read. I'm oh, sorry, serial dot uh, begin ninety six hundred. Go ahead and open up the serial port. Okay, and what we'll do is this. We will say um, serial dot print ln enter a number. Okay, and we'll say while serial dot available equals zero. This will pause the program, as you know, and then we'll say int a equals serial dot parse int. Okay, and let's get our second number. Enter a, enter another number, int b. And we're going to have a function called add. So we're going to say add. We're going to say um, add a comma b. And you see up here we have in sum. We're, we're going to use this. Okay. So how does this work? Well, right now it doesn't do anything because we don't have the function add a b. Um, and what we're going to do is this. We're going to say void. add we're going to call it my add int a comma int b this means it takes two parameters two numbers a and b kind of like the um, digital write function or um, pin mode it takes two things it takes the uh, 
the pin number and the moat, it's kind of like the same thing. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. All righty, let's go ahead and move these back. And we're going to say C equals A plus B. So all we're going to do is we're going to say, oh, sum rather, not sum. We're going to say sum equals A plus B. And we're going to say serial dot print ln or just print sum sum equals serial dot print ln sum so if we were to run this watch how this works let's go ahead and upload this it's fine Okay, I always forget to do this. I don't know why I always forget to do that. I always forget to put these in. All right, I should just call this. These have to match. All right. That was just a dumb mistake. Okay, so if we do this, we're going to run it, open it up. Enter a number, so we'll enter like 5. Enter another number, 6. So sum is 11, okay? Don't keep asking us that. Now you might say, let's do a print function too. So we're going to put void print me. And um, let's have it take int a. And it doesn't matter what you call it, it's just a number. Okay, and we'll do this, ready? We're gonna take these two guys. Serial, whoops. Serial.print, now we know that print me is, is A, right? Serial.print, and we're gonna put, make it more general. Number equals plus a. You know, we don't know what, what it'll be. We're just going to pass a number. So how does this thing work? Well, we're going to say this. We call it print me. And we want to print sum. Now, why can we print sum? Because right here we set it. All right. And the variable scope, that means we, since we defined it all the way up here, that means all of these functions, void setup, void loop, void add, void print, they can all read it. If I were to define it only in here, like if I were to say something like this, for example, in sum equals a plus b, that'll actually overwrite the sum at the top. That's called variable scope. We're gonna talk more about that later, but just for now, put your variables at the top. It'll just make it easy. You could use them everywhere. They're called global variables. So let's go ahead and run it now. All right, looks like I didn't close something off here. say okay very good and let's try this enter a number I don't know 45 and another number one okay 45 plus one is six enter a number 55 and another number 100 so number is 155 okay so tutorial is almost over but I just want to let you know so we have a couple of functions we made we made add we made print me. And the reason why the add works is we put in two variables, int a and b. You can call these things anything. You can call it, you know, Joe and Harry. It doesn't matter. It'll still work, right? And print me, we'll go ahead and we'll print out um, whatever you put in here. So I just said print me sum. Now, why did I say sum? Because I, I set it here and it's it's global up here, right? It has to be global. If I didn't, if I said int sum down here, it actually wouldn't work, which would be weird. It, it wouldn't work. So just know, put your variables up there. So all of these functions, all of these functions can use them. You're going to do a lot of exercises, a bunch using all these ideas because they're really important in programming. And I really want to make sure you understand them. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you found it educational.